Ah, new story, new story, creativity. Gonna see what the story's coming in through me. Gonna break from the cycles and we're gonna see what the universe got a new verse for me. Rewrite it, rewrite it, rewrite your future with your mind. If you do, then you will discover what's inside. Take yourself for a ride, see what's gonna go down when you put the story down and see what comes around. <laughs> Just freestyling with y'all. I wanted to drop some lines and help to redefine an epiphany that came inside my mind today that literally blew the doors off my prefrontal cortex, literally blasted some DMT into my uh, pineal gland. Not like, you know, DMT, but like the, the, <laughs> the organic stuff that's created in your pineal gland. Did you know that? Did you know that? Um, oh man, I just had the most epic event yesterday. The Mind Lab presents biohacking and future mapping for leaders and luminaries. And honestly, it was kind of a, a monumental day for me. It was a, a big step as a rite of passage in my process of personal growth, transformation, and transmutation. Because as many of you know, I've been on this like epic quest to heal my soul, to fully and radically express my purpose on this planet as all of us are, right? That's what we're doing. Um, and, uh, and, and it was crazy because, you know, like I've been on this world tour called the Activate Tour and, we, and I go to all these different countries, but I never do mind labs in Oregon and Portland where I'm originally from, you know? And I think it was because there was a sense of, of fear of like, fully expressing me and my story, a full expression, like a full, um, you know, authenticity, the vulnerability of like saying, hey mom, hey sister, who they both came to my workshop. It's like, check out, you know, this weird stuff that I'm into, you know? And I mean, obviously my mom's like super weird. She loves paranormal stuff and, and um, it was super cute because the whole time I was doing my workshop, she was there saying, the biblical interpretation of what I was saying and I was like okay mom I want to hold space for you to do that and that's cool but um, I had this like beautiful re-emergence of, of um, uh, a revelation and you know when I say a re-emergence of a revelation what I mean by that is that when we are waking up and when we are becoming conscious every time we become conscious it's like we're opening our eyes for the first time the same way that a spiraling uh, shell is opening up like the Fibonacci sequence, right? We are literally Fibonacci sequences in our hands, right? If you look at your own hand, that's the Fibonacci spiral um, that's built into our DNA, the way that we spiral like the cosmos, the way that our, our planet is spinning around the sun and the sun is moving through space and it's creating this kind of like vortex spirally spin, um, similar to the mathematical equation that Nassim Haramin has uh, exquisitely discovered from the mathematical equation that Einstein never completed the work, the unpublished work of Einstein picked up by Nassim Harriman and then gone to then discover and complete this mathematical equation that pretty much says that there is this spin and torque within all of our atoms that drives our expression and our expansion and the volume of, of, of black, space, black holes that are literally in our atoms. So we are pretty much a living, breathing black hole and we're a living, breathing magnet um, attracting our reality. Fact, scientifically proven. Like, don't even need to, I mean, you can go do the research on your own. I don't need to sit here and quote anyone, but um, I just think it's crazy that I'm t talking right now about stories, old stories and new stories, while I'm sitting here in front of, you guessed it, Brookwood Elementary School, my elementary school, and I'll never forget being right here at the front of the school, and I was, oh my God, it was like one of the worst things, and I don't know why this memory just popped in my head. I was standing here waiting in line to get on the bus, and I'm standing here, and this kid is like, comes, and I'm in line, you know, and this kid comes over, and he comes up to me, and he goes, hey man, what do scissors do? And I was like, cut? And he's like, Thanks. And he cuts in front of me and gets on the bus. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? You know, like this guy just jacked my sweat. I was so pissed at that moment. Um, 
<laughs> I just think it's funny, but you know, I want to get to this topic because I think it's one of the most mind-blowing epiphanies. I don't want to get too far off track here, but I am at my elementary school, Brookwood Elementary School, sharing this story about creating your new story, breaking free from the past paradigms that are locked into our mind, that are built into our subconscious mind, which is the mind inside of the body. The subconscious mind being the mind inside of the body, all of your neural programs and your neural circuitry that has been hardwired and encoded into your body through feelings and emotions. And when those emotions come up and we say, oh, those emotions are there because of my story, who I think I am, right? We get addicted to a certain state of feeling, a certain state of being. We get addicted in a sense of we are unconsciously reliving an experience because that's where we assert our identity. That's where we find our identity and, and identify ourselves as being depressed or as being not enough or whatever it is that we become identified with. So, so this revelation came to me, you guessed it, while I was on the dance floor getting weird at ecstatic dance today. And I was like moving and grooving and like you know, if you see me at ecstatic dance, you know that I'm like, I'm not just dancing. Like I'm doing, literally doing energy work on my body. Like I'm moving and reprogramming my body, my, my genetic infrastructure. I'm like creating new genes. I'm, I'm doing breath work. I'm moving and grooving. And so, um, so I was, I was doing this work and I, and I just like was doing some breath work and then boom, I just had this revelation and a lot of the things that came up yesterday at the mind labs uh, event that we did uh what what it was was like putting down the old story right because like as much as i want to hold space for you to share your story and go through your process of like you know d you know sharing what happened and reliving that experience I've done that for so many years and honestly, like every time I relive the experience and talk about it, I'm bringing the past into the moment and then I'm reactivating that experience in my subconscious mind because the subconscious mind does not know the difference between the actual experience and, and, and what's happening. So in a sense, what's happening is I'm actually reliving the, the experience emotionally every time that I tell the story. Right, because I might be feeling bad, and I'm like, oh, I don't feel good because you know there's this unfinished karmic business, this story that is still hanging with me, and I'm reliving this story over and over again, and I'm, and then here I am with you asking for advice, right? So then, and 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 I'm like, well, what's going on? You're like, well, let me retell you the story again, right? And then you tell the story, and it's like, oh man, and then people like feel compelled to need to have like empathy and like, oh, that's I can't believe they did that to you, or I can't believe that happened or okay well what you know how can I help you know and it's like I don't know right and we just get so addicted to the story it's like ah and you just tell the story and it feels so good to be heard it feels good to be acknowledged it feels good in that moment to to just like have somebody be there with you and be like holy shit that story sucks right dang I hear you I see you I feel you I acknowledge you in your pain right but like then you put the story down and then all of a sudden you walk down the street and you get triggered by something and next thing you know, here comes the story again, right? You relive the story. Oh, you tell the story. This is why I am who I am because of this story. And so how can we begin to reprogram, repattern? How can we re-inspire ourselves? And how can, we, how can we put down the old story? Because when we put down the old story, guess what happens? You lose a piece of yourself, right? You lose a piece of your identity who you think you are. This is my identity. This is who I think I am. You can't threaten that from me, bro. And if that's you, then you should probably end this video right now because, you know, like it, the moment we lose our story and this is the revelation, this is the revisitation, the re-acclamation, ac proclamation <laughs> of the revelation. Um, it's that the moment that we let go of the story and we die to the old story, guess what happens? All of a sudden, we are completely reborn in a sense that we are a blank canvas for consciousness. We are suddenly liberated energetically and emotionally. Whew, we've got all this new energy. We're swimming around in the cosmic cauldron of consciousness where anything could happen, right? Where infinite potentials exist. We're no longer reliving the past because when we bring the past into the moment, we reactivate that emotion 
and that genetic expression, that epigenetic expression, and then now we're on that same genetic timeline, right? We're on that same timeline. We're locked into that quantum reality. We're locked into that dimension, right? But the moment we let go of the story, shoo, it's like, whoa, boom, you land back on your feet and you're like, whoa, I feel like I'm in the same world, but I'm on a new timeline. I feel like, you know, these people are the same, but I'm different, right? Your energy shifts. Now, here's the thing. There is a potential that when you do this, you might have energy released from the body. What that might look like is tears. What that might look like is a breakdown, a mental breakdown, a moment of revelation where you realize, holy shit, my story has been running my life and I'm done. No more. What am I going to do? Right? And, and you start to like almost, it's like a mental breakdown because here's the thing. The ego is going to try to fight. The ego, the identity is going to try to make sense of it all. Right? It's going to say, well, wait, this is the story. La, 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 right? And we're like, no, wait, hold up. I am consciousness right now in this moment. I am the, the light and presence of consciousness right now in this moment. I'm, I'm shining brighter than the old story. I'm not, I, I know the story is there. I don't need to put it down all the way. You can just let your light shine for a moment. Tune into that infinite expansive presence of consciousness. Just, just let it shine for a minute <sighs> and breathe. <laughs> I'm getting somewhere here, guys, so bear with me here because this, this gets good. This is important. This is possibly one of the most important videos that could have transcended through my freaking mind today, and it was on the dance floor that it hit, and it just blew my freaking doors off. So the moment that we put down the old story, we put it down, we realize that it's there, we become conscious of it, we realize it's there, we put it down, and then we become empty again, right? We become nothing. We become nobody. We become unidentified with any certain story. We say, okay, yeah, like there was something there, but now I'm available for something new. And this is the energy. This is the energy. Thank you, Nathan, letting it come, brother. Here it is. This is it. This is the aha. This is like the juice. Is that as you enter into this next chapter of the story, right? The new chapter, the new season the fall season, right? The fall, the, the leaves changing colors, right? Transmuting, letting go of the old leaves, the old pages, the old story, letting go. And then we, we become bare, right? And our energy goes yin. We bring our energy back yin in and we're, we're honing it in. And then we say, okay, we, we tune into that infinite source of divine expression that is you. That is your presence. You can call it whatever you want to call it. Whatever name you put to it. I am. You are. We are. We are it. Tune into that energy. And then we say, okay, I am going to begin this new chapter of my life with a subtle sense of curiosity. With a joyful sense of curiosity. Of I wonder what's next. I wonder what is going to be the new story. What could it be? Because here's the thing, the moment that we let go of the old story, we don't have a story anymore and that's scary, right? Because we lose our identity, we, we lose who we think we are. But if you're saying, I'm opening myself up to a new potential and I don't know what it is yet, but I'm curious to see what it is and I'm kind of excited because I have a feeling it's gonna be something pretty freaking epic. Right? Love you too, Brother Noble. Thank you guys. Thank you for tuning in and sharing with me because the moment that we define, redefine who we are on this journey as a curious creator, co-creator, we say, I wonder what it could be. Now here's the magic. Here's the magic. The moment that we open up in that way, we're no longer holding on to the story and we start to have a childlike wonder for what it could be. And as we walk into our life, our normal life, the places that you go, the people that you see, the things that you do, you have a new perception, a new window to reality where you're seeing and witnessing new opportunities that were not there before.
Now this is where it gets interesting because if you guys have ever experimented with flow state consciousness or experimented with being in flow where everything's falling into place and synchronicities are coming and unfolding and epiphanies are like boom, 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 or you think about someone and then all of a sudden they're in your inbox, right? Or you, you're, you're thinking, oh, maybe I'd like to go to this place and then all of a sudden there's you know, some opportunity to go. Whatever it may be, you're in the flow, right? You're in the flow of synchronicity and in flow state consciousness. You're in that constant flow state. And now what happens? Now here's where it gets good. This is where we get creative. Because everywhere you go when you are in the flow, you'll begin to see signs and symbols in your life. For me, signs and symbols come in nature. When I'm walking down the street and I'm thinking and then all of a sudden uh, an eagle flies by, right? A beautiful eagle. Or, or, or I'll be like going and then I'll like say something powerful and then like a bunch of, uh, of, of like fruit will fall from a tree that I'm standing next to. Some weird synchronicity in that way. You know, those like magical nature moments where like you say something and then the wind blows, right? Or like something, those, these weird symbols and synchronicities that keep you woke to the reality that you're living in a, 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 a reality of frequency of energy and of quantum potentiality in a sense that infinite potentials exist starting right now in this moment. And I truly believe that when we identify ourselves as the hero of our journey on a quest to discover our power and to fully express ourselves in this lifetime to allow the divine source of creation to express itself fully through us, in this lifetime, right? Because like, isn't that what we're doing? Aren't we like a divine expression of creation? Like we have these little cosmic eyeballs with the black holes in the center and we're literally scientifically, mathematically proven that we are black holes. Nassim Harriman, check out the work of Nassim Harriman. Check out the, his uh, movie, The Connected Universe. Check it out. Like it's like, whoa, like, Right, you do the work, you start like all of a sudden you let go of the story and you start like researching, right? You get on this like epic quest of like rite of passage researching where you're like, boom, synchronicity, boom, synchronicity. All of a sudden your life is just filled with magic because all of a sudden you, you're like, holy shit, we are like magical creators of our reality. Did you realize that? And you're like asking people like, dude, did you realize how powerful we are? And they're like, what? I'm in my story, bro. You like cool story, bro. <laughs> Nathan says, living in the infinite potential that all is possible, always in all ways, always in all ways. <laughs> Love that. All day, every day. <laughs> so, so now here's the next level. All right, I know it keeps getting deeper. I'm, it just keeps getting deeper. I was like, damn, I like literally transcoded all of this earlier. I got out of dance, I got in my car, and then boom, like three pages of just downloads. It could be a book, it could be a program, I don't even know, or it could just be a Facebook Live right now. But here's the thing. When you start to tune into this idea of archetypes, uh, the, Carl, Carl, uh, the work of Carl Jung, he does a lot of talk, talk about archetypes and explores and researches a lot about archetypes and, and how that we can embody different archetypes. Now, consider archetypes kind of like a, a tarot deck card, right? Like you pull a tarot card and it's like, boom, here's your doom, right? Like you are the joker, like, or you are the, you're, you get the death card and now your ego's dying or whatever, right? You get all these cards. Well, here's the thing. We are archetypes like you in your own essence like you are an archetype or an expression of creation and, and a unique expression so you're like a unique divine code of information an unfolding Fibonacci sequ sequence right you're unfolding no matter what it is like if you are thinking feeling and taking action and believing like your your neural feedback loop of thoughts feelings emotions actions and beliefs wait like whatever you're believing and perceiving right now in this moment that's what you're going to be believing and perceiving more of in the future we are constantly expressing more of ourselves in every moment right so then the question becomes like how can i get off that karmic cycle of reliving the past, right? That, that karma, 
and and that getting into that cycle of samsara, right? Like reliving it over and over again, the same emotion, the same pain that we're holding on to that's just like, God, you guys, I can't even tell you how much pain I've been holding on to for like majority of my life from childhood trauma. If you haven't heard my story, I'm sure I've shared it a million times by this point, which is good because my story before was like, I couldn't share my story. It was like, I couldn't tell anybody that I was abused as a kid. It was I mean, a secret, you know, it was like thing and like, and it was just haunting me. Right, and it was all. It would always come back, and I would always point back to it as being the reason why I'm failing in my life now. Right, and so, so finally, when I decided to do the work and start to mend and rewrite the story, I went back in time. I forgave people. I called people. I connected people. I healed with people. I faced those the dark demons. You know, I faced that the 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 darkest of the of the dark. And it's like, and as I did that, I got stronger. Right? I became the warrior of light. I became the warrior of my own life. That was the archetype that I began becoming. I started to step into that. Rather than being the wounded healer, which is an archetype that Carl Jung and a lot of other um, theologists and, 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 and philosophers talk about, uh, you, you know, there's the king, there's the, you know, there's just like archetypes, but like, rather than saying, oh, I'm going to be the king today, it's like, no, like realize that you are an archetype and you are a, the hero of your journey and as you enter into this new chapter with a curiosity for I wonder what the new story is going to be, the universe, Y-O universe, and the reality that you walk into as you step forward into this new chapter of your new story is going to deliver you opportunities to embody a new potential, embody a new being embody a new paradigm, a new, a, a new consciousness, right? You, you, you're you're going to see things differently. Similar to how like when you are painting a painting, you start with your base coat, then you do some, uh, some lights, and then you do your highlights, and then you do your shadows or whatever, right? Every time you take a step back, you get lost in the painting, then you take a step back, and you see it differently, and you're like, oh, interesting. And then you do your highlights, and all of a sudden you're like, whoa, this painting's totally different. Right? There's something new about it. There's some new thing. And like I, I did this same video on Instagram earlier today and then like all of a sudden I was like, whoa, there is a new layer of this story that I'm realizing. And it's that the story comes in layers, just like a work of art. Right? And so so yes, put down the old story in a sense of stop retelling it. Just stop retelling it. Stop refeeling it because when you bring the past back into the moment, you're collapsing that feel, that energy potential, that wave of the past, you're collapsing it through thought, creates the feeling, the emotion, and you're reconditioning your body to that past self, which is holding you back. You're reliving that past experience and that's keeping you on a predetermined genetic destiny. But if you break free from that, you say, fuck that, nope, no more, hey, I ain't watering that mind garden anymore. I am uprooting those weeds of negativity and I'm planting new seeds of potentiality. And from this moment forward, here's my new story. And then you write it the fuck down. You start writing. You start creating. You start asking. You start seeking. You start researching. And you don't stop until you wake the fuck up. <laughs> over and over and over and over again. <laughs> the end. <laughs> pretty much. But there's more, but I, I, I want to wrap this one up, you guys. It's been super juicy and um, be like an onion, Nathan says. Acknowledge we have layers. It's so true. Michael, dude, love you guys. Thank you guys for joining me today on this flow cast, this consciousness cast at last in allowing the energy to flow me so fast. Just seeing if I can keep up with the words that want to be flown through my mind. Redefine your life. Put the story Read down, pick it up, read it up, rewrite it, perceive it, and dream it up. Back here at Brookwood Elementary School, where I grew up, this is where I come from. <laughs> that flow life, though. Love you guys. Um, happy Sunday. Enjoy those changing of the season vibes. Ah, oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. 
I'm heading out of Portland. I uh, did the Mind Lab workshop yesterday. First one, again, first one uh, that I did since um, on my own, which was really, really beautiful. And now that I went on that hero's journey and shared the workshop, biohacking and future mapping for leaders and luminaries all over the world, now bringing it back to Portland and sharing it. It's like, it's a full circle experience. You know, it's like the, the, you're, you're, you're closing the loop. I closed a loop. And so I am initiating myself right now in this moment in a sense that there was something that I was being called to do and I did it. I made the leap, even though it was scary, even though it was vulnerable, even though it was hard, stressful, I had to work, I had to ask people to come to an event, I had to you know, like promote relentlessly, I had to like prepare, and, and, I, and, and, and even though it was hard, I did it, and now I have closed the cycle. I did the work. It was beautiful, it was such an epic gathering, and it was so fun, and then now it's like new adventure. I'm leaving for St. Louis tomorrow for a week, then Mexico, then Florida, then Bali. It's like the, the, the adventure continues, you know, and, and I don't know where what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to be okay. I might, you know, be faced with moments where I could even die outside of my comfort zone, outside of the old story. I don't know what's going to happen. It's scary. But you know what? All the small steps that I've done leading up to this have prepared me to make that quest, right? And same for each one of us. When we step up and we decide, you know what? I'm no longer gonna live in that story. We put down the story, we're made new, we're made a blank canvas for the cauldron of consciousness to be made manifest in our life as us, through us, with us in every moment. And then we make that commitment, we recommit, we reinitiate ourselves on that hero's journey. We reinitiate yourself. Initiate yourself to the next level of consciousness. Initiate yourself to the next journey of personal growth, of transformation and transmutation. Transmutating being on a genetic level, on a neural physical level, on, a, on, a, uh, on an embodied somatic level. The energy and the frequency that you are emitting. Every atom in our body having a positive and negative ionic charge. The voice and the sound of our voice creating harmonic resonance that's invincible. You cannot see the words coming out of my mouth, but you can hear them and your body will naturally transduce the frequency into meaning because we are meaning makers. We are meaning makers, making meaning of our life, bringing purpose, being the purpose. So be it, see it, perceive it, create it and then demonstrate it, be it, become it, breathe it, eat it. <laughs> it's what's for dinner. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm gonna go. Uh, so much love. Share this video if it has touched you or um, you know, definitely reach out to me if you guys are interested. Um, as, you, as many of you may or may not know, uh, my uh, coaching and strategy initiative is called Sacred Strategy and I work with people to actually channel into the future. And um, it's kind of crazy, but when I was 16 years old, I was initiated by a spiritual teacher to have the gift of prophecy and healing. And ever since then, when I was 16, I just said, okay, let's go with that, right? And, and, and so um, in the process of launching my own seven companies on my own, I've mentored over 300 people in channeling into their future to help them align their themselves, their marketing strategies um, with the emerging future and to establish yourself as, a, as an expert in your emerging field. So how can you become a thought leader in your emerging field? Because every industry on this planet is being revolutionized, decentralized, and we have the ability to tap into the future and actually begin to identify like how can we position ourselves so that when that future emerges, we are standing there in our power. And, and, and every session that I do with people is always so different, but I do have a framework. We work on Skype, we work on a Google document. The whole session is recorded. I actually will organize all of the projects that you're doing and help you gain so much more clarity. And I would love to support you guys in this journey because that is my gift and my passion and my purpose. And I would love to co-create with you.
So if you're feeling called to reach out in any way, shape, or form, I also do a lot of healing work with people, um, healing curriculums uh, to uh, go on a rite of passage journey to reprogram our subconscious mind and our body to emit a higher frequency of consciousness. And you guys, like, I mean, miracles happen scientifically. I mean, it's called a spontaneous remission of disease. The moment that you put down the old story and stop giving your emotion to the energy vampires of the past self and make the commitment to re-embody a new energy and allow that new energy to flow through you, shift happens. Shift happens and it can get weird. And everything. all of a sudden you're like, whoa, I don't know what's going on in my life right now, but things feel good. And it gets really good. And I just encourage you to ask yourself, how good can it get? And how quickly can it get that good?